Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're in Temple Town, right out of the very coast, down near the Hook Peninsula here in Wexford and just outside Feathered in Wexford. We're here to take a look at the church behind me, some gravestones and this amazing um, building that was built by the Knights Templar. So the Knights Templars were founded by the Crusaders in Jerusalem early in the 12th century. In 1172, King Henry II granted extensive lands to the Templars along the eastern shore of Waterford Harbour. Uh, they set up their headquarters here in Templetown, which is named after them. And at nearby Kilcloggan, the Templars were disbanded in 1807 and their lands were given to their great rivals, the Knights Hospitallers, who built the fortified church at Templetown and the castle at Kilcloggan. Now, as I said, we are here to look at um, this, but also the church. Now, the church came in the early 1800s. So um, very, very interesting. We'll read some headstones as well, and hopefully we'll be able to climb up in here. And I'll give you some more information then as well. So this site is very special with the runes we see today delighting us with an unwritten history carved in stone with a combination of masonry from several historical ages coming to life within its multi-phase architectural drama. After the Norman invasion of Ireland in 1169, Henry II granted large sections of land on the Hook Peninsula to the Knights Templar. So this area of Templestown was the headquarters of the Knights Templar in this area of Ireland and they lived here until the aftermath of Friday 13th, 1309. The members of the Knights Templar from this area were imprisoned in Dublin Castle. The tower that we see here today um, was probably constructed by the Knights as a defensive structure designed and used to defend against the native Irish of this area. The Holy Order of the Knights Templar were an order of fearless warrior monks that stirs up images of loyal warriors and you can just imagine them draped in heavy chain mail um, identified by their infamous white mantles emblazed with that red cross known as guardians of the faith and the holy land and protectors of pilgrims. They were the keepers of secrets, writers and breakers. Whoa, and breakers of codes. Now that was a pigeon who uh, like nearly took the head off us. Obviously pigeons are in here and uh, he certainly frightened the heart out of me. We do see nests up there, but I don't think it's... Pigeons don't... Do pigeons make nests? They kind of don't really, do they? So, this is blackened like it was. Um, a fireplace. We have this little area here. But we also have this area. So, look guys, we have stairs. So, Whoa, another pigeon. Now, this is so dangerous because um, over time, you can see the amount of bird droppings have uh, landed on this. And I can hear lots and lots of pigeons going up. Oh, we can actually get up as far as here. So just to give you, there's the pigeons. <laughs> just give you an idea of what the Knight Templars actually lived in. I mean, it's, it's quite amazing. And uh, very, very interesting. You can see there the windows and the structure of it. Right, I'm not going to go any further because you can see it's quite unsafe. Well, there's a lot of pigeons up there. But uh, even the part now that I have walked up I think I have to come back down um, backwards. It's a lot of bird poop, as you can see. And what's happened is it's created like a dust on top of the steps. So it's actually made the steps quite hard to even place your feet in. 
as I stumble back down. But very interesting, you can still see the stonework is uh, pretty much there. And I think the, the pigeons that, whoops, whoa, I forgot there was a last step. Pigeons, I think, were kind of roosting there. Wow, as they're just, they're literally coming out. I don't know where they're coming out of, but uh, obviously I've disturbed them now, but they'll go back in. So this kind of area, um, the tower, as we call it, it kind of brings us into this. Now, this was a church, obviously, but um, the church itself was built around 1801. Now, just have a look. Like, we were talking about the Knight, Knights Templar using this place as, um, you know, a defensive tower. And you can just see out there the sea, the ocean. And about 20 minutes away from here, we have the famous um, Hook Lighthouse, which is, I think, the second oldest um, functioning uh, lighthouse, if not the, the yeah, if not the only, or the oldest, I should say, functioning functioning lighthouse if i can get i have the phone on the gimbal so i'll give you a look out and as always when we're on the coast it is uh so windy and absolutely freezing you can see some of the windows still actually have that iron where they you know they would have it would have held the um window frame the glass this lovely glass that we see in um do you know the stained glass we see in churches today i'm sure they would have held beautiful stained glass and just look at the beautiful windows absolutely stunning and you know it's always a shame that you find these places that are just left abandoned that does seem strange there's like a a hump here in the middle and what this is actually giving me vibes of like a crypt. Now we know a lot of these churches would have had underground crypts, so who knows? There could actually be. Usually priests are buried in underground crypts in churches, but like who knows? I'm not quite sure. Wow, look at the little pigeons. <laughs> I'm not sure where the Knight Templars themselves um, from here are buried. I mean, a lot of them were, as I said, imprisoned in Dublin Castle. So, you know, maybe this whole place, you know, was it was clean out of the, the Knight Templars. And uh, after that, then, it became abandoned. Right, so then, as I was discussing there, like, we have this beautiful cemetery. And I hope the gimbal, you know, it's, I, it's so, so windy here. But I hope it kind of manages to stay focused and the audio is okay. Gosh, look at this one. This is old, isn't it? We have like a spear on this one and almost like it's some sort of animal. But the spear runs right through it though. Look, the spear runs right down through it and he's just there. I am presuming it is the Lamb of God. But I've actually never seen one quite like that. So let's just take... A wander around and uh, see if we can find any of the more interesting and the older headstones. What's this one? Now that looks like an ancient kind of a medieval looking, yeah. Sure looks like there was some sort of design there and here. It's hard to kind of see now with all that, um, the lichen on it. Might, it doesn't, do you know what it looks like to me? Like a man on a horse. You see that? Yeah. There. Oh, hold on. Like this is the horse's body and his legs and then a man on it. I wonder. See, with all that lichen, like it literally, it's almost like cement. It builds up and up and up and destroys, eventually destroys the stone. There's nothing on the back of it. This one here now is... It's beautiful, actually. We have the scene of the crucifixion. Absolutely, look at his face. 
quite different to what we're used to. But look how well. Wait now, I'm just going to have to steady the gimbal. A rooster on it, is it? No, yeah, it's so well carved. The coins, the ladder. The coins, the ladder, spear. And look at our Lord. Wow. What date is on that? 1839. Uh, erected by Eleanor Caulfield um, in memory of her husband, Thomas. He died 28th of September, 1839, aged 86. That is absolutely stunning. It almost looks like the, the rooster is standing on, do you know, pump for water? See the two streams of the water coming from it? Something there is on, on the ladder. Oh, yeah. On. And people are great um, for kind of letting us know what some of these symbols are. We are learning as we go along. So if you have any ideas, guys, definitely leave a comment below. This one also would have had lovely designs. Unfortunately, it's so weather-worn here, especially with the, the winds that we're getting off the coast. Oh, wow, look at this. I've never seen that. Oh, gosh. Right, okay. So up at the top, we have our angels. Then in the middle, we have, I'd say that's a rooster. But look at this guy. He looks like uh, some kind of a Templar thing. He does. He has the cross. I wonder, is he a Knights Templar? Look at the cloak. And over here, there's another one. He has a different design. It's very hard to show you. Wow. And then we have like a, a temple. Looks like a temple to me here in the center. Wow, that's quite amazing. I've never found anything like that now. Any name? It's stone was erected by Andrew Andrew Power. Power in memory of his daughter Bridget Shea alias Power who departed this life September the 6th 1824 age oh, she was only 19 so very very young but that headstone would have been absolutely beautiful it would have stood out in the cemetery This looks like um, a more recent inscription on this. Very interesting. Look at it. It's a, about a, a captivity at a Japanese prisoner of war camp. In memory of Michael Walsh, 9th Royal Artillery Coast Regiment, who died in captivity as a Japanese prisoner of war. Wow. The 5th of March 1943 in Singapore. Erected II. by the Wexford branch of the Royal British Legion with grateful public and private donations. So World War II. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. Now there's a whole list here. Philip Walsh, 1956. His wife, Annie, 1962. And their son, Michael. Killed in last war between 1939 and 1945. That must be Michael, yeah. Um, and do you know something? They don't actually have a date of his death. So that just goes to show how raw that must have been for the family. They know he died between 1939 and 1945. Possibly later on somebody came along and erected that and found out his exact date of death because it says there, the 5th of March 1943 in Singapore. Their son John is here as well. And uh, their daughter Kathleen so we've the whole Walsh family here. But uh, General Michael Walsh, who died in captivity in, as a Japanese prisoner of war in Singapore. Wow, that is extremely sad, isn't it? But I'm glad that uh, donations were, were collected from the public and privately in 2013. And I have now got his date of death here. Was that around the time of Pearl Harbor? I'll have to look it up. Invaders. Could have been. I'll have to look it up. Absolutely amazing, like, you know, it is very, very, like, war is so, so sad. We're here talking about the Knights Templar, and then you, you come and you find somebody that has died in World War Two. you know, in uh, captivity. Like, it just, it's like full circle again, guys. It happens a lot. So look, this is the side of the tower. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at the top of that. I mean, it's amazing that it still stands all of this time 
you know, moving forward. Do they know that they would still leave their tower here and it would still be here? In memory of Michael Hendrick, drowned in feathered lifeboat disaster, 20th of February 1914, aged 47. I believe this is his brother beside him, in memory of Thomas Hendrick, in feathered, drowned in feathered lifeboat disaster, 20th of February 1914, aged just 39. Same day. Same day, same lifeboat, obviously the same disaster. Uh, that is shocking. And actually behind us here, when you look out, you can see the Hook Peninsula. Uh, Dungarvan, I believe, isn't it? Dungarvan is on the far side. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's such a beautiful, beautiful place, but it is extremely dangerous out there on the sea. Um, as I said, the hook is there as well. This is also then family belonging to Thomas and Michael. We've Garrett and we've Bridget and we've James and James's wife, Mary, here as well. So they're all buried here, but the backdrop behind the cemetery, it's fitting when you hear of people who have drowned out on the sea. Very, very sad so we will keep going um like we have some when i say new headstones you're talking a, a you know 1980 or so and then much much older ones as well there is a few uh, signs of grave markers here as well look at the lamb on this i presume this is a lamb i'll have to take a look at that now in all our time looking at lambs we've never seen one with such detail, look at that, and we have two angels as well. And this is erected by Thomas. Ooh. James, is it? I don't know, in memory of his father, John Jones. Jones. Thomas Jones, in memory of his father, John Jones, who departed this life October 1798, aged 60. Also his mother, Bridget, she passed away 1825, and she was 81. And also his brother, Matthew, 1824. That is stunning. Look, at the, I like the, the wool, everything there is carved with such detail. Absolutely amazing. We have a few in there that are kind of completely covered with um, ivy. I'm going to turn around and give you another glance at this amazing tower. I mean, Wexford really has such history uh, this route here is called the norman way and it has kind of dotted around the area just um several churches and graveyards this is strange the way the writing is erected by and it says anne murphy but it has anastasia kind of wrote right up on top of it of the Spring, it says, erected by Anastasia or Anne Murphy of the spring. Maybe both of them erected it in memory, no, of her husband, William. So was Anastasia maybe known as Annie? But it seems that they made the effort to put the two names. Um, he departed his life August 1856, aged 63, I think it is. Some gorgeous designs on that. Oh, now you'll have to forgive me if the gimbal is slightly blowing in this wind. This looks quite old. You have the IHS at the top. We won't actually be able to read it, unfortunately. Those types I've seen before just don't last. No, it's like they dissolve, but that does look very, very old to me. It looks like sandstone. Sandstone, yeah, I think that's what it is. So you can see there's also like a little door there. Another entrance. We have a tiny, tiny little cross down here. Look at this. Look at this. I bet there's no inscription on this. It's tiny and it's all on its own. Oh, hold on now. There is something on that. Looks like... Ga oh, this is made out of wood. Garrett. Oh, it is. Hendrick. Hendrick, is it? Uh, Henrik. 1950. 1950. So this is just made out of timber. So somebody has come along, I'd say, later on and um, have put the little timber cross. Woo! That is windy. Two headstones here, 1843. 
on this one for the Staffords. Someone on this one here died in Sydney. So this is erected by Catherine Auerhin, New Ross in loving memory of her mother, Kate. Faraday. And who died the 21st of September 1921, age 74. Her brother, John Faraday, who died in Sydney on the 24th of September 1927, aged 40, also her grandmother. And her cousin Patrick is remembered here. Her cousin Patrick died in China, aged 28 in 1936. And then she has another cousin remembered here, Joseph Wallace. He died in Belfast, it looks like, or late of Templetown and Belfast. China and Australia. So China and Sydney, Australia, imagine, both remembered here. So if the gimbal is blown, forgive me, as I said, you can see the grass there, the way it's, it's blowing. It's quite breezy. We'll take another look at this gorgeous view. I might zoom you in a little bit just to give you an idea. I can only imagine how rough the, the waters are down there. That brings us to this side. There's a, a bar there. It's actually closed at the moment. And it's called Templars Inn. So obviously named after the tower we've just visited. Now we have sailors here. A sailor of the Great War Unknown Seaman, 1917. A sailor of the Great War, unknown seaman, trawler George Milburn, 1917. The first one was a trawler by Lock Air, it's called. And then deck hand um, George Milburn, Milburn, I think, uh, aged 27, 1957. They just leave stones in front of the water. Yeah, I don't know what that's about. It's a um, sign of respect. Tradition. Maybe. A sailor of the Great War, unknown seaman, HM trawler, Lock Air. So we've two people here from the Lock Air trawler, uh, 1917. And it's here on this memorial then, it says it records the names of the men of the RNVR and RNCVR who were lost off the coast during the Great War when their vessel struck German mines, but to whom the fortune of war denied the known an honoured burial given to their comrades in debt and who are otherwise buried in this graveyard. And we have a list of names there. So the HMT Lock Eye, 20th of April 1917. And the HMT George Milburn, 12th of July 1917 there. Also remember the crew of the German submarine UC-42, which was lost with all hands during the mine laying operations in September 1917, least we forget. Wow. That is, it's very, very sad. Uh, but, you know, between wars and, um, you know, people laying mines and stuff that have lost their lives and probably a lot of them weren't even buried. Um... Probably some weren't even able to be named other than that they were lost. So there you go, guys. The Knights Templar Tower here in Wexford. And I hope the audio and the, the gimbal has been kind with the wind and it's, it's done okay for you. Right, so guys, that's it from Templetown here out near the Hook Peninsula in uh, Wexford, just out of outside of Feathered. Um, if you like this content, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the notification bell. That will let you know um, when I upload next. Leave me a comment down below about the Knights Templar, about the graveyard, about the wars and the people that are remembered here and buried in this beautiful graveyard. Okay, so guys, thanks for watching and take care and God bless and I'll talk to you all soon.